Just to see how long things take, uh, on my machine, I set up a program to make 2 to the 30th accesses to uh, integers. And I spread those integers across varying amounts of memory. So only across 64 bytes or 128 bytes, all the way up in my experiment to 16 megabytes. In all of these experiments, I kept the number of integer accesses constant, and all I changed was how much memory I was drawing from, jumping around these different sets of memory. And you can see that if I'm drawing from a small amount of memory, then uh, it takes much less time than if I'm drawing from a large amount of memory, even though, in abstract terms up until today, it's the same number of operations, the same number of load operations that I'm trying to perform. And the reason for this variation is explained by the details of my machine. Uh, my machine has an L1 cache that's 32 kilobytes, and it takes four or five cycles to get a value from the L1 cache on this machine. Uh, the L2 cache has 256 kilobytes, takes 12 cycles, L3 cache is 3 megabytes, takes 36 cycles, and if I have to go out to main memory, then it takes on the order of 100 cycles. That explains why in this picture, from 64 to 32 kilobytes, then the performance doesn't change very much. All of that fits in the L1 cache. As soon as we cross into the L2 cache territory, then it starts rising, and when we get well out of 32 kilobytes, then it has risen quite a bit. It starts to plateau again until we get close to the L2 cache limit. And at this point, both in my program and competition with other programs on the OS, then we are pushing and having to get things out of the L3 cache. So that explains the jump around here, and things stabilize for a little while, until, again, we have this big jump where we exceed the size of the L3 cache and start having to fetch from main memory. Now, that's for random accesses around the memory. It turns out if I change the program to do 2 to the 30th sequential accesses, that is, I just get one integer after another in order in the, by their address, and just cycle around the memory as many times as I need to, we see the same performance for those small sizes up to 32k, and we see a change when we cross into L2 cache territory, but it's not nearly as dramatic a change. In fact, where our 16 megabyte test from before was a factor of 8 or so, now it's only 20 or 30 percent. So um, it makes sense when we have to fetch from bigger and further caches that it takes more and more memory, but why this difference between random and sequential access? To explain that, we need a more detailed model of how the cache works.